Oh no! So this is this is we did skip the castle and the dungeon and the helicopter crash and Roth's heroic last stand. We are heading to the the beach. Oh jeez! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is something else entirely. I <laughs> never knew about that. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Hello, I'm uh, Matthew Gaston from Crystal Dynamics. I'm a uh, senior technical designer. At the time of making Tomb Raider 2013, I was a senior software engineer working mostly on uh, player gameplay, running, jumping, climbing, and then uh, hunting systems. And uh, this is Jeff Wages. Hi, I'm Jeff Wages. I'm a senior designer at Crystal. I was a level designer on this project, made a, uh, designed quite a few of the puzzles that we'll see or not see as this run gets going. Uh, this is the any percent category, which means any and all glitches are allowed, and they just need to get to the end of the game as quickly as they can. Um, so if it's anything like the other runs for Rise and Shadow, there'll be glitches aplenty. Probably behind the world and lots of interesting things. Yep, no glitches yet. We get to watch Laura get strung up from the ceiling. I should also say uh, this is run is on PC. Uh, apparently, the run on consoles is a, an hour longer. This is also the original release as opposed to the definitive edition, which also saves an hour. And then there's a glitch list category, which is also an hour longer. So something about being the original release and the PC and glitched saves an hour over the other categories. I'm not sure where that time save is, if it's all at once or if it's in multiple places, but I'm sure we'll find out. This looks like a really simple puzzle, but there were a lot of things that had to go right to make this work reliably and to feel good on the controls. So far, it looks like Katarev is doing it as intended. No tricks yet. I don't think there's easy ways around that. And yeah, this will be the first of... Ow! I think this might be the only gruesome bit in the game that we'll see. Uh, most of them happen when Laura dies, and I can't imagine we'll be seeing many deaths during the run. Ooh. Actually faster to reload than to play through it. But yeah, that must be where we set the checkpoint and... Go. I don't know. I don't know. Already it behind just a skip story. Yeah, we are out of bounds already. Surprise, um, we keep her in slow walk mode for a little while until she recovers from the, the hole in her side. Yeah, I'm sure. I imagine he'll, he'll hit that trigger somewhere. I think he's trying to go around the uh, the, the falling rock puzzle or something, or not puzzle, but falling rock moment. Yeah, yeah. There are a few places where Laura plays an animation that reacts to either yeah rocks falling down or duck under a beam. There's a couple waiting water sections too, which will are obviously slower than yeah. Jumping this around shows like this. how levels are built. Lots of rocks just placed around the outside of the, the play space. You know, yeah, able we to the, walk on top of the rocks. We rotate the rocks. And, yeah, we rotate the rocks and push them, use them as the walls, and so they have collision on all sides. So you get, oh, and we're all oh, we're gonna skip the puzzle. <laughs> skip so, everything. Yeah, normally there's several minutes of letting things on fire. I was worried that this trigger wouldn't fire, but yeah, there, that hallway leading up to this slide was supposed to have rocks caving in and the walls pushing in on all sides. Yeah. I think we'll see that here. And there was all sorts of uh, puzzles and tutorials and all kinds of things he skipped. Ooh, and we're out of bounds again. Running around the, the backside of all the dangers. Keeping the camera pointed up too sure what that's about. The collision below should be the same no matter what. This is the purple tunnel climb. <laughs> Lots of finger wiggling to scramble up here. And we're through.
this is a pretty cool moment. The Laura walks up yeah. onto the onto the bluff and sees all the other shipwrecks. Uh, speaking to the story a little bit, I okay, guess this know. is this is a uh, Laura's first adventure. She has not raided any other tombs. She's just normal university uh, student on an archaeological adventure, um, looking for Yamatai, a legendary island off the coast of Japan. They find it, but something about the island causes a whole lot of shipwrecks, which is what happened to Lara. Oh. <laughs> she just flew off screen. Huh. Sneaky. We can get, enable control a few seconds before we I don't know what to do. The camera there. Yeah. Okay. Take it slow. Let this little camera play. I wonder if there's a way to jump around that that camera, or if it's necessary for this to cross this log at all. I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing if there were a way a way to get around I'm, this, they'd be doing it. I'm sure they looked. There's a couple of uh, cases in speed running where there's there is a way to get past something, but it breaks something later on. So I'm wondering if that I was see. the case there. Another reload checkpoint. I assume to uh, skip some skip animation. Me. Yeah, a lot of animated story moments. Yeah, I'm not sure how the timing rules work on this. Past. Um, many categories of game ignore loading times for the for the run, so the loads that are caused by reloading checkpoint might not count. We are climbing the bomber. Let's see if we get another reload checkpoint after we touch down here. Lots of uh, okay. rolling. I was actually curious about that because we were seeing jumping earlier before the bomber. Yeah, I'm not sure why sometimes jumping and sometimes rolling. Huh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm really curious about these reload checkpoints. There's going to be a theme going through. Yeah. We checkpoint and then we play a nice video and that lets you skip over it. That was a normal skip. Those we intended. I can't just sit here. This is Laura's first night on the island. She's cold and now she's hungry. Yeah. She's going to have to. Yeah, we have subtitles on. She needs to find something. Story cut scenes. Wait, I can use that bow. Yeah, hunting came in uh, surprisingly late in the process. We had all this nice world, and we had our bow figured out, and we had no animals. I could do this. So we uh, had to come up with something to make the island feel alive, and that made deer and rabbits and crows. And we added the hunting sequence to kind of make a little bit of gameplay out of them. It's a nice story moment, too, because, it's like, yeah, Laura gets, like, a sort of an audio flashback of learning how to shoot a bow and arrow from her mentor, Roth. Yeah. This is not her first time shooting a bow and arrow, I imagine. Most people would not be able to successfully hunt a deer if it was their first time. Okay, it looks like we're going to try and clip through this. Yep. So normally we make you stay in that area for a few beats longer, but I think we just grab the bow and we clip through the door and we're on our way. Ladders are slow, clearly. <laughs> what am I doing? So that uh, that clipping through the the wall. That's something we've seen in the, the runs for Shadow and Rise. Is uh, Something about aiming does something to Lars Collision that yeah. lets her sneak through walls. Yeah. Um, collision is all uh, force fields and math. And uh, as she goes into aiming mode, we change the shape of the collision so that you can still see where you're aiming even if you back up against a wall. And something about how we changed it 
made it uh, gave some sort of opportunity window to, to put it on the other side of a wall and do it just right somehow. Looks like we're doing it again. Yeah, you can see aim the bow and back up against a wall and something in there. Ooh. Can get so normally what happens comparison. if you go to that door? Okay, I was wondering if we were going to be able to skip the, the campsite cinematic coming up. It's not only is there a cinematic, but then there's like this uh, shooting wolf mini game that happens afterwards. And I think we might be skipping all of that. Yes. Yeah, I, think, I think that's all skipped. So now we, we are jumping rather than rolling. <laughs> Might depend on shape of the terrain. If it's too steep uphill, rolling might not work as mm, well. Yeah. Um, so in that cinematic, we met both our main villain, Matthias, as well as a couple other uh, survivors from the shipwreck. Uh, I think just Sam, actually. Now this is another survivor. Yeah, Sam at that first one. Yeah. Who's her best friend, and who essentially gets kidnapped by the bad guy. She will be a, rescuing her. Will be our main objective. Yeah. yeah. Now she's met the sort of experienced scholar guy. Normally she's supposed to so work with we... him and talk to him here, but <laughs> we just climbed up over the wall. Yeah, I think we did upgrade our axe which surprised me, but um, if we did open that door, we would be stuck behind Whitman, who would be chatting up the uh, yeah. and they were collecting the salvage the I think they, they upgraded it so quickly, they didn't notice. Uh, but the, the cinematic teleports Whitman ahead. Okay, we didn't skip this scene. Laura has her, tie, oh. her hands tied behind her back, so no aim clipping through walls now. Skipped the setup where she was captured and tied up with some other prisoners, and then she's making her, her run for it. Yeah, got a yeah. whole bunch of gameplay with hands tied. Which is an interesting uh, change for animators and uh, some of the gameplay systems, really. I just say we're still yeah. rolling. I'm surprised we left let her roll with her hands tied. That's, a, that's not easy, I would imagine. Really painful, especially up stone stairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we let her jump still, or if we're rolling because it is faster. So I imagine we'll skip the cinematic, but this will be uh, Laura's first kill coming up. She gets grabs the guy's gun and blows his brains out. There are a few quick time events in this game, and I think this is one of them, so that's why it won't be skippable, I guess. We'll see. Yeah. Oh yeah, we make the player pull the trigger themselves. Oop, and there he goes. Yep. All right, so now everything's on fire, but now we have our hands back. Let's see and how we get through this quickly. Yep, now we're jumping. <laughs> oh, and a roll, interesting. I'm really curious about the movement. Here we go I think again. In terms of pure forward velocity, they were supposed to all be fairly comparable, but since the roll is animated, it might cover distance in a little different way. We did skip a building there. I can't remember what's inside. There is a bigger building coming up. Nope, we skipped all the buildings. Very sporting of Laura. Well, that was <laughs> some of the comments when this game shipped. You know, 
She makes her very first kill, and then minutes later is just slaughtering guys left and right. Oh yes. That'll be the, the the last few kills for a few minutes. We're coming up now on the game's first, the first of three of the game's major hubs. This is the mountain village. Oh no, not yet. Okay, maybe this is the the burning building I was remembering. Yeah, I got my wires crossed. Sorry. In a while. <laughs> yeah. That was wrong. There will be more murdering yet before we get there. So this is a more open area, so I think this is just finding the quickest path through rather than any actual glitches. We did try to create a wide path for Lara where possible. Oh, we have a chimney climb. I don't know, so far the game's holding up pretty well. <laughs> There's a couple of clips and that went out of bound in the first level, but... This has been more or less as intended since then. I hesitate to, to think how much longer we can count on that. Um, so I think now we are coming up to the first hub. The game has a bit of a Metroidvania flavor where Lara needs to find what, a gear item to open doors let her, that lets her make progress. So for the mountain hub, the mountain village hub, she'll need to go one way, pick up the rope, come back, unlock a new path, go another way, unlock the shotgun, come back, unlock the final way yep. the, the rest of the game. I hesitate to think how much of that we'll, we'll be doing <laughs> or for skipping all or any of that. I suppose if you can find a way to the end of location, maybe you don't need all that other stuff. I don't know. So I think our game is like Metroid, where we actually do make you complete the the, seek, the, the action to get the item the uh, inventory item we don't sneak it into your inventory at a later checkpoint so if you do skip the yeah. the the axe and the rope here we don't give it to you later i think the axe and the rope at least are important enough gear items that she Oops. will be grabbing them oh <laughs> it's like magic the old uh we call it the bicycle slide yeah Many have fix, had to fix a lot of those bugs, for sure. Yeah. What happens is there's collision that's marked as ground that Laura is very happy to stand on, and then there's collision that's marked as wall that Laura will try to slide off of. I'm not sure what's keeping her from sliding all the way down in those cases. Oh! Oh, I thought we were skipping to the back of the cave to pick up the, the radio transmitter, but no, we we're... We've gone... Oh, wow. <laughs> We've bypassed the entire path to the radio tower and snuck in sort of... This should be the return path, I think? Where are we? Uh, yeah, airplane? Pre or, pre or post airplane. So I think we are on the intended path, but we just skipped the climbing axe, so I was wrong. We do not need the climbing axe. Yes, this is the intended path forward. I was a little worried we... There's another path that comes back from this area. I was worried we clipped into that one. Oh, <laughs> Who's this lady jumping through our camp? <laughs> we'll blame these guys for being a little confused. There are many common encounters where we do force Lara to kill at least some of the people, but apparently that was not one of them. Now we're still using our sort of uh, caveman axe. It's funny. So we can't we can't axe climb, which is a very important mechanic for a large portion of the game. So I'm curious how we'll get around that. Is there a later upgrade that maybe skips it? Ooh, maybe. I don't remember. Again, like Metroidvania, Lara will... The sliding on walls, that's a combination of 
collision that doesn't let her go down through the collision through the walls and then control inputs that try and steer her so if you steer mm -hmm. kind of uphill collision will hold you in place just well enough to not fall all the way to the bottom so i have to say we did pick up uh, lara's machine gun but didn't look like she wants to use it there just headshots with pistol are good enough Uh oh, here we go. Yeah. Not sure what that the checkpoint for the was. Squeeze way. Skip something. Might have been just a despawn the enemies behind her too. Oh. Oh, using the barrel to to push herself through the wall. Uh, this is a new version. Ah! Anytime you have a solid object right up but not flush against a wall, if you can somehow get the the character in there, they'll they'll squeeze one way or the other. Yeah. Ooh, where are we going now? Ooh, uh, another bicycle Ooh, trip around Jamie the mountain. <laughs> no, over the bridge. <laughs> Skip over that. It's like a highway on ramp. Yeah. Make a big circle to take the overpass. Let's see. This is one of the best areas in the game, I think, and this combat is very cool. We are not doing any of it. It takes time. Fighting yeah. takes time. So the goal of this area is to get to the top of this radio tower to hook up our, our transmitter to call for help. And we're supposed to fight through a bunch of guys. It looks like we will be doing the slow climb up. We'll see how he speeds this along. This is a very cinematic experience. So. Oh, yeah, one very... of the big things we we added to this in general was like trying to make these really emotional, visceral moments come to life. So make you really feel like you're high up there and could fall. Yeah, but Lara is in a not her usual state, so a lot of the glitches, normal glitches, don't apply. That zip line, you might have seen. Yeah, that line to the left is her way off of the radio tower. I was worried he <laughs> might have found some way to get on that early, but. Now it looks like we're going all the way to the tippy top. Uh, it looks like we've gotten out of sync somehow with the the ladder animation, so there was something there. Oof. I forgot just how brutal we made this climb. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I, like, I would but, not want to do this. No, I, I would have Especially passed with all the broken out stuff. at the first landing. And even that second landing where we scrolled down, I was getting vertigo. <laughs> we make her do this. We are not nice to Lara Croft in this game. <laughs> Goodness. That looked pretty normal. There's that zip line. He's climbing down is way too much. Yes, yeah, we did expedite that. <laughs> we do have a bad habit of using zip lines as sort of <laughs> band aids in a few places in this game and the others where, like, we need to get Willar from here to here quickly. Let's hang a very steep zip line. You're picking up the lighter. This is one of the less TV important... and movies have the luxury of just. Yeah. Gotta start my torches now. TV and movies have the luxury of like cutting <laughs> to yeah. a new scene. <laughs> Games have to find clever ways. We we did do a cut. She skipped the climbing down half of the radio tower. Yeah. Oh. oh, and skipped the whole airplane. Any... Well, cinematic. We still have to slide away from it. Yeah. I think, no, it was the, the next slide. I remember Ryan did a very funny TV segment playing this, and he got very angry at his co-presenter <laughs> every time Lauren died, because the deaths were very gruesome. Yes. <laughs> he was taking it very badly. Kept, kept hitting all the obstacles and dying terribly. Yeah, but like I said, we will not be seeing any of those here. 
suspect not. Maybe there's a funny glitch where the dying helps. Ooh, another reload checkpoint. The pilot. I let him skip the. Yeah, what the happened glitch? there? No, no, no. This, this is it. Huh. We didn't get a. Uh... Jason with us today, but he could tell you all about this <laughs> sequence that he crafted with all this motion and these kind of high and low saving paths. This was quite a challenge to deliver. Yeah, there, there was a time where this was all static and Lark had to take her time exploring here, but. Oh, yeah. Then we uh, <laughs> made it all collapse to keep it exciting. So there's a couple different paths, which are the, the legacy of that. These buildings have been here for hundreds of years, and suddenly Lara tears it all down. All right. That is something Lara Crouch is very good at. She can, so much you glance at something, and the rocks will fall from the ceiling. So now we're traveling the back roads, I guess. Yeah, this is where we get the rope. We so I'm worried. I'm worried we are skipping the rope. I, I don't believe it. No. This might be it here. This is where I thought we were clipping to um, cool. back in the Mountain Village hub. What? Yeah, we have broken the streaming somehow. Streaming is very confused <laughs> about what should be loaded and what shouldn't be. Oh, I see. So there was a thing that was supposed to have been destroyed or removed. Yeah, or unloaded. Oh, well, how did we get the rope? rope arrow? <clears throat> So we did get the rope, I just don't know how. Normally it's a cinematic that plays where Laura reaches down, she grabs the rope, and then we get a moment where she rope arrows her first enemy. None of that played, so... We didn't reload checkpoint either, which is the other way I'd expect the rope to be added to her inventory, right. so I'm not sure what did it. Or gliding. Yep, so this is the mountain village again. It's daytime now. Um, and normally you need the rope normally to you do a whole, <laughs> yeah, like a whole the sequence of normally. rope attachments. Got oh, and we got the axe again. Hands. Okay, so there must have been some trigger there where we refreshed her inventory and gave her everything she, had, she should have. Which is very kind of us. Safety feature. Yeah. The Metroid games always play with fire when they don't, but... That's what lets all the sequence breaking and cool routing happen. We make sure the player does have those tools. Mm -hmm. So the path we're on will take us to the monastery and the shotgun, which is needed to break a lot of the, the flimsy wooden barriers everywhere. I'm curious if we'll actually go that way or if we'll find some exploit to get past it. Looks like we are heading that direction. Yeah, story-wise, we tried to call the plane, not appreciating the, uh, the the sort of supernatural forces about this island that create the weather that destroys any vehicle, boat, or plane that approaches. But now Laura's like, huh, there's something something funky going on here I need to get to the bottom of. She's starting to learn this about is also the... where we'll be for... Yeah, this Imagine. is also where we'll be at the end of the game. So <laughs> there is a small chance we'll just skip to the end of the game here. Doesn't look like it. We'll find out. Now we introduce a big scary bad guy. And Lara's hanging from the meat hooks again. So far, Lara's just been fighting the uh, sort of militarized cult formed by the other shipwreck survivors over the decades. <clears throat> where we do a, a more ancient threat that is guarding the, the secrets of the island. I was not going to be able to see them quite yet, but she'll uh, get plenty of uh, hints Teaser. and glimpses. Yeah. What's happening here? That's the parachute guy we were trying to rescue. That didn't go so well. This room cannot be pleasant. This whole island is very unpleasant. 
Japan's a great place to travel to in general, but not this, not this place. <laughs> not recommended to visit this cave. Yeah, start with Tokyo, Kyoto, leave Yamatai for uh, the very end. The cave of body parts for later. Even the rats are leaving. That's right, we had rats too. The shotgun should be soon. Yep. How will I ever get through that wooden barrier? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and we turn around immediately. The so shotgun way. was really all we were, all we cared about. Now time to here. We have more. Yeah, more bicycling. <laughs> Oh, not even. Just regular jump climbing. That's all marked as floor. <laughs> yeah. Looks like she's hitting all the streaming triggers. This is a relatively large location, so I guess a lot of it is loaded in at once. But that was nothing like the normal path, which involves a lot of slow ledge climbs and cinematic things flying through the air and knocking her off. And... No time. No time for that. Oh, the wind puzzle. <clears throat> Which we will be doing. So, there, yeah, there are some events. So triggers can either be a location thing. Laura must cross a specific plane. But then there are other triggers that happen as a result of completing actions, like, for instance, solving a puzzle. So this puzzle might be necessary to actually load the next area. There's no no amount of bicycling or clipping through walls or sneaking around that will let us skip it. Oh yeah, because this leads to the whole like broken down temple slide sequence. Mm -hmm. Actually fighting a fight. Well, kind of. We're, we're watching the guys <laughs> spawn in out of thin air. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how the spawning got broken like that. I, I, we might just rely on you being further back and not and counting on the guys to keep you from that vantage point. That's a I don't know. That's very sneaky. To just close play. to how I used to play it. Just try and get. Yeah, that's they true. I guess it, certainly QA would have figured out to do that. So I don't know. Maybe he was doing something fancy there. After ringing the bell, the whole temple's falling apart around her, and she's gonna get out. This whole piece rotated and moved while she was on it. It's a clever bit of work. I don't know how you guys implemented that. There was a lot of, yeah, <clears throat> very tricky. Uh, it helped a little bit that she bounced through the air and didn't have to be standing on it the whole time. Oh, yeah. So now we are back in the mountain village one more time, but now we have all the little pieces we need to break all the barriers to get to the next major hub of the game. Yeah, I'm surprised. I, I thought for sure we'd be skipping some of those areas. But no, we've we've followed the, the critical path pretty closely. I guess those enemies will kill us if we try to sneak past. Well, especially if we have to do that. Uh, let's see. Has she heard from Sam yet? Yes, that was the, the the cinematic where Sam calls us on the radio, where she's been captured by the cultists, and uh, Laura's like, "Stay right there. I'm coming to save you." Now she's making her way down <laughs> to where Sam is being held. We'll probably get a, a vista of it in the left, which will be the, the ancient Japanese castle that the the, the scavenger cultists have. Uh, Co-opted. Crossing the river. 
Yeah. <clears throat> this is where Conan O'Brien <laughs> died several, several times. Yeah, yeah. Now, cleverly, it is almost the same. Certainly the same mechanics, not necessarily the same layout, but uh, sliding down, there's debris, there's obstacles you gotta dodge. And we added the, now you have to blow things with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. These slide mechanics were great. They, uh, we didn't use them as much in Rise, which is a shame. Cause they're really very robust. Like They take all kinds of terrain changes and let Lara steer around. Yep, uh, that ate up a big chunk of my life. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Parachute sequence. This came out pretty well, actually. Yeah, it's... I saw one angry review about someone who died here repeatedly, and look, I'm not sure how. We do make it try to be very clear about which way you should be going left and right. Yeah. I mean, it's a unique mechanic, so you don't get a lot of practice. It's true. A lot of those moments we do want them to look very impressive and very dangerous but we do hope the players get through <laughs> with, yeah with only just, you know, death or not left right right left something fairly straightforward all right here yeah. we are in the second yeah. of the major hubs this is the, the scavenger village lara's re-injured herself with the parachute landing opened up her original wound <clears throat> that's actually a good point i'm the speedrunners probably tried very hard to, to skip this state where we put her in a slow she walk. Slower. Yeah, she can't grab things. Oh. You can grab things if she does that, I guess. Limited mechanics. That, that unlocks. What Her goal here is the next gear upgrade, which is the, the fire arrow. She uses to heal herself. But I think we're skipping Somehow, that. Magically. Wait, shouldn't she this, have... Now we're skipping it. This cinematic, I think, is going to put her in the, the right state again. Magically healed. She's trapped. And her. For her to go. Get... And through the wall. Yep. So we did skip the fire arrow, which I don't expect will hit us any. This is my favorite area of the game. This whole very vertical shantytown location is very cool. You kind of spiral up it, taking on enemies as yeah. you go. Yeah, if you just get here your first time, it, it's very confusing. But yeah, it's basically just a spiral. A Sometimes you can get a good vantage point to kind of get the layout of the whole village. Yeah. Laura does come back here later on, and you can explore more at your own pace and find all the nooks and crannies, but not we're not doing any of that. <laughs> just bicycle past everything. We need to get to the top, and to do that, we bicycle up cliffs. Oh, and this waterfall. We are well out of bounds. This is not... <laughs> I don't know where we are. <laughs> this, this was not supposed to be playable, that waterfall. Although it looked it for a moment. Ooh. The edge of the world. So our next stop should be the... the the castle and the the dungeons below it. Um, I'm not sure if that's where we're headed yet. We might be headed to the beach instead. That will skip a lot, if so. I have no idea where we are. It's a castle. Oh no! So this is this is we did skip the castle and the dungeon and the helicopter crash and Roth's heroic last stand. We are heading to the the beach. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is something else entirely. I never knew about that. Yeah, I don't know about that either. Normally, she she's on the the headset going slow, but that let her uh, <clears throat> fly through the sky. That would imply that gravity's off, which I wouldn't have expected. Yeah, I'm not sure there. But going back from the castle and that whole sequence unlocks this gondola, which takes her to the to the, the beach. There's another big action set piece. It'd be harder to skip this, I suspect. 
So let's see if they surprise us. <laughs> Floor has the new ability to fly through the air. Dynamic moving platforms were another tricky challenge. Do it wrong, the player slides off, jitters around, all sorts of bad things can happen. And this whole sequence was kind of developed behind my back. I wasn't aware of it until I <laughs> saw it and like, holy cow, how did you guys pull this off? Yeah. And I guess we won't be seeing <laughs> seeing it. Yeah, something about the, the being on the radio. Let's Laura fly. really a pity. Sure? That's very cool. This is where playing through the radio sequence speeds you up. Yeah, you can tell by the conversation there, Laura has now figured out that there's something in the monastery that is keeping people from leaving, that is causing all the, the storms. She resolves to go back, even though her friends who have survived just want to get, get out of Dodge. It occurs to me that all the sections we just skipped might be the hour that we save over the other categories. Certainly glitchless would have to go through the castle. Oh. Did you touch brightness there? Was that what that was? I'm not sure exactly what's doing that. I assume it had to be frame rate. It happened so but, uh, fast. When we do do the ship, good. Yeah, the I thought we were skipping this. Pirate ship battle. Oh, but just climbing in the underside. And there's yeah. so many places to fall here. We do a few stunts where, oh, all the triggers and collision and that she would hit after the fight was over are still down there, I guess. And Laura found oh, because the boat like sinks early. at one point. Yeah. yeah. So we'd skipped a lot of the the, the the airship, but we saw a good chunk of it at least. The idea of it at least. Yeah. And another water slide. This will land Lara in the third and final hub, the beach. Shipwreck Beach, I think we called it. Another very cool area. What's the name of the crab? <laughs> I don't know, but you're right. We did have an achievement, I think, for, crab. <laughs> for killing the crab. Our community is a lot of fun. They come up with all kinds of silly names for many of our animals. <laughs> I remember the uh, the big kraken we had from Tomb Raider Underworld was the Underpuss. Yep. Oh, where are we going? Normally we're supposed to be meeting up with our friends and, and going to find tools and going back to the, the ship we came in on to rescue Alex, but we might not be doing any of that. Gliding on mismatched collision and also invisible. We are. So I think we're heading into the base for some reason. Maybe just to trigger the story flag that unlocks the, the next cinematic. Oh, we are going inside. Around here she gets the... Uh, what's the... Real in device, the ascender. No, she gets the ascender on the the endurance, the the ship. Oh, oh. I think we might be skipping that. I don't think there's any more gear items after that. That all she's getting here is story progress. That's travel. Oh. Really. Fast travel back down to the beach. The boar. So going to the pirate ship, this is supposed to be the first gameplay beat of this area. But I think we were just setting a fast travel point that we'll use later, but I'm not sure what that saves us. Is there any sort of state change in the beach that would explain that? I don't think so. I don't huh. remember. <laughs> nice use of the uh, search point. I think this is another area where there's no no gear item we're looking for. It is just story progress. <laughs> huh. 
I'm very curious about how this is routed. Why did we... What's the point of going to the research base early? Well, it saves you a big climb later, I guess. If you come at it from above. Yeah. I guess it, it skipped a trigger in a bunch of cinematics, and at some point, some somewhere along the line, it gave us the the fast travel point on the beach. So maybe it was just a way of skipping cinematics. Jonah, we haven't seen him yet. He has big roles in the the next two games. Upgrading something. Maybe health, just so we can skip through combat. And now we're back in the research base. Huh. Yep, so that was probably why. I can't imagine there's anything in the research base that requires the pirate ship as a trigger. That was one puzzle that I did work on. We haven't seen many of those yet, and uh, we skipped right through it. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Using an elevator. You don't get to up see a lot of your content, and all we got to see of my work is bugs. <laughs> <laughs> you can still take pride in that. Yeah. All the, the speed. And I guess once you're moving properly, that's also mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I worked on a few of the the the, the side tombs, which are optional puzzles. A couple yet, and we skipped the one in the endurance. Yeah, there's a good chance that might be the only puzzle of mine. We'll see. <laughs> and even then, we only get a glimpse of it. Climbing. That's some speed climbing right there. I imagine all of us in the office working on this game got very good at the the, the bunny hopping off of up of up the walls. I think we did skip, no, uh, yeah, I guess we, we clipped through the wall to skip a combat, but that was the intended path back out to the beach. We should have all the, the story progress we need to unlock the last area. This is another really cool area, and another uh, helpful zip line. It's a problem with long zip lines up. Not really that much fun. <laughs> well, no. keep in mind she's supposed to have the ascender here, so this is supposed to you hold the oh, button. Oh, okay. It's way up. Supposed to have all in an instant. Yeah. Okay. Silly speedrunner. That's why we gone faster it. if you <laughs> went to get the ascender. Let's see. Most of our zip lines are this. You go down them. Yeah. Is entertaining enough for a not very interactive mechanic. No, we did a great job. Like the actual controller rumble in your hands. I remember the first yeah. time I felt that. We did a fantastic job on that. So it is, it is very tactile. Lara, what do you expect to find in there? Do you really want to know? Yeah, we tried to pay attention to that. There's the soul of an ancient sun queen. It's a very pretty area. I think we built entirely for the cinematic. Finally regrouped with some of her shipwrecked companions. Yep. We saw Reyes there for a moment, who I don't think we've seen before. We are returning to the monastery. If you remember, this was the place we went to during the village. We, we bicycled up a mountain to get there. But now we're going there to, to de destroy or undo whatever supernatural forces is calling the storms and keeping us trapped on the island. Laura very heroically tells her friends to, to stay behind and let her handle it alone. Just as well. She pretty much destroys all the people who stand in her way here. And her arm is all scratched up badly. I'm not sure why we're uh, watching this if we can't skip it. I guess we're loading something in the background. That's a good point, actually. We, we do change her model over time. She still has the, the blood on her side from when she was stabbed by... Rubar earlier. A little nice attentions to detail.
transfer from rope to ledge, always accompanied with a camera cut. <laughs> Too Wisely. hard to figure out how to animate that. Faster too. Yeah. Like for Lar climbs a lot of ledges in this game, so all the little uh, ways we can speed that up makes uh, the playthrough that much more pleasant. <laughs> Still in bounds. Coming up is the big formal introduction for all the the oni, the sort of zombie samurai who are still guarding this area. Is a long but very cool segment which with Lara sneaking and climbing around. I can't like imagine we'll be the, watching it though. Shooting the burnable wall before fighting the guy. Save some time. Oh yeah, the, the little optimizations like that are are very interesting part of the route. Because you're right. You're just wasting time watching the wood burn. So if you do that first, you can kill the guy in the meantime. I take it back. We are doing the the slow introduction for all the Oni. Although I think they haven't loaded in. <laughs> We've skipped some important trigger. <laughs> there's supposed to be all sorts of guys marching on the bottom there. <laughs> we always struggled to have, you know, new areas loading at the same time as keeping the gameplay interesting. So like. Some of the what we would think of as connector paths we'd have to make those more interesting because we didn't want to just be walking and then they'd get more expensive and then we'd have to load <laughs> load them there's this like tricky feedback loop of figuring out how to this was on the, the 360 and ps3 and i remember when the ps4 and xbox one came out it's like all i wanted was the ability to, to to load and dump yeah. from memory instantly. <laughs> but we didn't have those string hallways. And now with the, 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 this current generation, we finally have that. So I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah. String hallways were a reality of game development for a long, long time. Better than loading screens, but oh yes. not a lot. So far, not many skips through this area. I think this was the, one of the first areas we built in development, too. So it's funny that this is the one that holds up best. Back on wood. Might see Laura fly through it yet. Like, this bridge is supposed to break and dump her into a large combat scenario. We'll see if that happens. Looks like it will. Falls a lot. She does. I, I suspect this is another section that the spree owners have tried very hard to, to find a way around and have frustrated right themselves by, by not. Yeah. I think here we do have to kill all of the enemies in order to progress. Because they, they knock over a bridge. It's not something we can just clip past. Ooh. Think that damage was intentional. You will see damage boosting and speed runs and intentional deaths, but I don't think that was what that was. There's the bridge. Oh. So I remember we went out of our way to to grab that shotgun earlier. I wonder if this is why that the shotgun is just fastest here. Casually, you're in a casual playthrough. You're supposed to kill all these guys. Not sure if we need to for the speed runner. If they're just uh, oh, it looks like yeah, it looks like they're still trying to kill them all, just yeah. using explosives. Yep, kill all the enemies, reload the checkpoint to skip whatever scenes happens next. Yeah, that might be where another case where we load the next area not based on a a, a, a plane that Laura crosses through, but on an event. Like enemies dying. Or maybe just spawns the next wave, I'm not sure. Once again, I can sense the frustration from the speedrunner. <laughs> not yeah. not wanting to do this one, just clip through the door behind her. 
until they they find like if I stand right here, they'll all drop in front of me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Good that our AI is so predictable they spawn the same way every time. Therefore manipulating the AI at all here. There's only so many paths on some of the same reason you can't skip around it is <laughs> the enemies only have a few paths. Yeah, I'm surprised that one barrier was all that was standing in our way. That's why we killed all those enemies. Oh, and we skipped over the fight against the big guy. I think that's just where the big guy is introduced. We fight him later. Yeah. We're supposed to fight him later. We might skip that. Who knows? He busts up whatever she was standing on and sends her to a new area. I was to say, this is another puzzle that I worked on. But we are also going to skip, apparently. <laughs> puzzles is not compatible with speedrunning. Like, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll stay behind to shoot all the enemies, but a puzzle? No, no time for that. There you go. You need, you need to make uh, puzzles... They're completely optional, but all they do is let you skip over large portions of the game. <laughs> play really fast. Uh, then the speed I, I love speedruns. It's always a temptation to intentionally bake in streamrunner strats <laughs> yeah. into the into the game, but no, game development's hard enough <laughs> without yeah. doing that. So game game basically, like, they're just they're inventing new ways to play games, right? It's, yeah. They're still having fun. Part of it too this. is that they're much more clever than we are. Like. A lot of this stuff would never have occurred More to us. Too. Yeah. This Even the it. bugs they exploit, we know about some of them, but it's so hard to make them happen. Oh, yeah. But the clipping through doors bugs, that survived all three games yeah. of, the, of the trilogy. <laughs> this is the final level. Let's see what we can do to make this go fast. This is a lot of traversal, a lot of little cinematic things falling apart. I'm going out of bounds immediately. I don't know how we got the axe and the rope, but it is a good thing, because we have continued to use them. Yeah, it's probably at one of the save points or you know, the reload yeah. checkpoint. This is like, your save file is missing the things you're supposed to have. Oh. You're supposed to, like, pull the bell back to break that door, but we just jumped through it. Yeah. It's, hard to, it. Yeah, it's hard to tell if, like, everything's loaded that's supposed to be loaded or not, because it looks okay. Yeah. You would have noticed if you could just casually jump through that. I would have thought so, but... So it makes me wonder about if things are loaded or not. Oh, things are collapsing. Tipping and moving balance beams. Those are the, the shipwreck survivor cultists joining us for the last battle. It'll be a three-way battle between Laura, them, and the, the Oni. Eee. It's funny not having seen this for a while, all the the red herring paths fool me. Like You jump onto the, the, the hanging bridge and you climb up, but no, you, you swing through it and grab something else entirely. All little tricks we pull to keep these climbs super exciting. In addition to <laughs> lightning strikes and things falling apart. Well done to whoever made this section, though. This is very much going as intended. No big glitches here. Yep. A cute little bypass there. You're supposed to fall down to the lower section of the climbing wall and then climb back up. Not so much a glitch, just a, a neat trick. Climbing with the vertical camera pointed up. <laughs> In 
curious about his bunny hopping technique. I remember when we did it, like we we get the full length of Lara's jump before we reattach, but he very much jumps, reattaches immediately, jumps, reattaches immediately. It's, I'm very surprised that that's faster. Yeah. Oh, we skipped something there. That was the, the, the final battle and the final boss. You're skipping right to the, the end. Yeah, she's... Yeah, she's... Skipped all the nonsense fights. This is just the, the final uh, quick time event. Laura grabs a second pistol, dual wielding. She did the, the classic games. It's got no shoes on. Must be very cold. Oh, poor Laura's been doing this whole game without gloves or a coat. Yeah. I'm not sure where the, the actual category would call time officially. Usually it's on last input. And that might have been last input just there. So this would be where the, the speeder was lean, leaning back, reclining in their chair, and enjoying their, their world record. So, this queen, uh, the ancient spirit of the queen, has been the supernatural power who is the source of the storms. And what the, the, the cultists were trying to do was resurrect the queen in a new body, which was our best friend Sam. So, Laura has interrupted the ritual, she has destroyed the queen, and she has saved her friend. And presumably they can escape the island now. Although I think, fictionally, Laura stays back for a few more months to, to plumb its mysteries a little further. To do post-story content. Oh. No, I think if you, if you uh, once the credits roll... I don't know if there is a post-game state. You have to collect everything at a time. But both games do have a... This and Rise both have a lot of content to experience from returning to areas. More collectibles to find. Rise even respawned enemies in different configurations with new conversations. Mm -hmm. But this is very much the end. And there we go. Well, yeah. so that was a speed run of Tomb Raider 2013. Uh, very fun to see how that plays out. Yeah, nice stroll through memory lane too. Thank you for watching everyone.